Welcome everyone to my playthrough of Arkham Horror The Internet of Conspiracy. This is going to be the first scenario, which is the Pit of Despair scenario. Uh, everything's ready set up. We'll go through a few things first. So I'm using the Trish Scarborough Investigator. She's a spy. I was back and forth for a while which I wanted to use, but I kind of like using the uh, the rogue cards, allowing me to sort of evade. She's got really high evade, really high uh, investigating stats. She has 8 health, 6 sanity. She has a really cool ability. So after you discover one or more clues at the location of an enemy, you can either discover an additional clue at that location or automatically evade that enemy, which is really, really handy um, in most aspects of playing this game because, as you know, enemies slow you down. Clues are essential to progressing mostly. So it's really uh, beneficial. And her plus two effect for getting that symbol is if it's an investigation, you may choose any of your location. You are now investigating that location as if you are there instead. So if any locations are revealed and I succeed in the investigation, I can investigate the location instead. So if I had some location that was out of the way or hard to get to, I could investigate there as if I was there already, which is a great little uh, idea. So using a road deck with some secret cards built into it too. So we'll read a few things first. So we'll go through the campaign book. So here we have Pit of Despair, scenario one. So I'll read this, I might put some dark promoting music behind this for some atmosphere. So this reads, your eyes flutter open with the lingua of one who has slept for days and end. Your senses are in no hurry to return. You blink and struggle to see through the inky black surroundings. Every inch of you aches of dull, throbbing pain. Your skin is cold and numb, and your clothes are waterlogged. Your mind swims with half articulated thoughts and tangled memories. You have no idea where you are or how you got here. You snap to attention, heart racing your chest. You lie on a jagged stone floor in a shallow pool of dark, ice-cold water. Knowing panic or unlimited situation worse, you take a series of deep, meditative breaths. You try to remember something, anything, that might allow you to retrace your steps, but your mind is blank. You remember who you are, nothing whatsoever from the recent past. You steady yourself and examine your surroundings. The chamber appears to be a natural cave formation. Kelp dangles from the ceiling, Stone walls and floor are wet and slimy. A rhythmic drip, drip, drip echoes from the otherwise silent cave. This cavern has been underwater, and not too long ago. Results of the tides, perhaps. You swallow your fear like a lump of cold iron. If it is low tide now, a cold shudder ripples up your spine. You examine the ceiling, and surprised to see a slab of metal set into the rough stone overhead. Its polished surface is alien to the rest of the natural cavern. You call out for help, hoping somebody can hear. Your dread deepens at the reply. An awful croaking and gurgling permeates the tunnels. A sound no human could make. So in this scenario, basically, we are trapped. We wake up with no memory of who we are, just lost in underground caverns and tunnels. It's quite a creepy scenario. We're just trying to find a way out. So in this scenario, basically, you're going to be exploring locations and trying to recover your memories through flashbacks and find an escape from these uh, caverns in Innsmouth. So we have key locations. It's a new... It's a new um, token in the Innsmouth set. We have a blue and green one aside, face up, and purple, red, and yellow face down over here. So we draw them, not we're gonna get till they draw up. Um, if it a key is at a location with no clues on it, you can pick up that key as a part of a free action. So we have the, there's three locations out that set us out of place. We have a bunch of face down tile locations. My deck just to the right down here, next to my health, sanity, and resources. We start off in the unfamiliar chamber and we have to draw three random face down locations to the left, right and below of a location. In this scenario, when locations are revealed, they'll be placed either to the left, right and below and you can move interlocking to locations, they're connected. So we also have the cards out of play, the amalgam, the blindside treachery and all three copies of the depth treachery. We also have in this set the Flood tokens, which are these tokens here. There are two sides. There are partially flooded, which is that side, and fully flooded, along with the blessed and cursed tokens. Now, when these are added to the token bag, you reveal additional token, remove it from the bag. These give you plus two, they give you minus two, which is a pretty cool feature. And we'll just look at the cards. So we have the Pit Despair um, key card down here. So, so we have minus one. 
Two, if the equation is partially flooded, and three, if the equation is fully flooded. So the flood tokens have a big part in how this game plays. Next is, if you fail, the equation is flooded, take one damage. And then with that symbol, if you fail, you control a key, take one horror. And if you fail, the amalgam is in the depth, point to play, engage with you. So the depth location is a location in this which is where the amalgam lives and comes back from constantly. We have the act card, which we'll just read briefly. So we need three clues to progress the act card. So this reads, you've awakened in a waterlogged cavern, you're mad of its memories, and you're not alone. Whatever else lives in this cavern, it can't possibly be friendly. You have to get out of this place and back to civilization. And we need three clues to progress there. And the agenda, which has a threshold of seven, uh, reads, a salmon lays dead on the ground nearby, its scaly flesh starting to rot. You can tell from the kelp and the dripping wet walls that this cavern was underwater not long ago. How much time do you have before high tide? And this has a force effect, so when your turn begins, if you're at a fully flooded location, you struggle for air. When your turn ends, if you did not enter unflooded or partially flooded location during your turn, take five direct damage. So basically, if we're so when our turn begins, if we're at a fully flooded location, if we don't move to a location that's not either partially flooded or unflooded, we will take five direct damage, which is going to be a hell of a lot of damage to take. So that's going to suck. About the way, I think we're ready to begin. So first of all, I'll reveal this location. So we have unfamiliar chamber. It has a cost of well, a trap value of three. One clue on it, uh, forced after it is revealed, randomly choose one of the set aside face down keys and place it on familiar location chamber without looking at it. So, take top face down key, we'll place it here. We will also place one clue on there. And I think we are ready to begin. So, we'll draw five cards one, two, three, four. Five. So I've only got one card from the actual new set, which is the cryptographic cipher, which we use to investigate locations. So first of all, I'm going to play Dr. Milan Christopher because I really want extra investigation stats. So we're going to put them down here. He basically gives us plus one to our um, intellect. And we assess, investigate, assess for the investigator, we gain one resource. It's also an ally, so if we do need to, we can have him take damage for us instead. So we don't need much else because that's when we get an enemy. Uh, that could be when we're fighting, use our intellect instead. We can't really afford to play that. Uh, we could play this to give us extra um, intellect. We're going to play this. So we have a total combined intellect of six, which is going to be really helpful in investigating locations. So here we go. So we're going to investigate the first location. We need to get higher than three. We've got six, so that's the score location. Um, minus one because nothing's flooded. So we've got one clue already. We'll put that down here. We also get this key as part of a reaction. We receive the purple key. Get the keys in hand in mind because they're going to be handy. So that's the end of the investigator phase. So enemy phase, no enemies. Upkeep phase, so we're going to draw a card. Gain a resource. So we have Dark Ritual, which is the card from the new set. Uh, this card... Um, at the end of the Mythos phase, you must either spend one resource or discard that ritual. It has a seal uh, keyword. So what this means is you can seal, i.e. remove tokens from that bag and place them here, sort of getting rid of the tokens at the bag. This is handy because if at some point you have too many uh, curse tokens in there, you can use this to get rid of it, but at the same time you have to spend resources or discard it and they go back when it's finished. Okay, and to carry on with the game, um, oh, the put one on the agenda, that's on one. Top card of the cattle deck, we have the Dreams of, I can't say this, is it Riley or Ryle? I can't say it. Dreams of Riley, put it in your threat area, we get minus one, um, willpower and one sanity. Test three, if we succeed, discard this card, which we're going to need to do, which is going to be really handy. But we only have a willpower of two, so we can't really do that yet, really, so we'll have to just deal with it for now. Okay, so I'm going to move to the new location. I'm going to move to, let's say, the right. So, we've reeled the dot. So, Bowman and Pit reads For each key controlled by investigator at Bowman and Pit, it gets minus one shroud, so it gets minus one, so it's five. If there are no clues Bowman and Pit and you control the yellow key, you notice an old, an odd, sorry, odd. If there are no clues Bowman and Pit and you control the yellow key, you notice an odd joint socket in the skeleton spin section that matches the shape of the yellow key. Read flashback two in the campaign guide. Okay, so put a clue on there. So it's got five against our six, so we might be able to risk this and give it a go. 
Should have given you a resource when I investigated. Put that there. Um, let's see. Just in case, I'm going to commit dot ritual for one point for the quest, for the investigation. So you have a total of seven against five. Reveal a token. Minus one. That's more than enough. Investigated. Gain a resource for Dr. Milan. Is it Mulan then? Um, so, if there are no clues about a pit, it's called the yellow key. I can't do that yet, so I need to find the yellow key. So, we investigated. We moved, investigated. We're going to move back across. That's our turn over. We'll draw a card. Emergency cash, just handy for resources. We'll gain a resource. We'll put Doom on the agenda and get an encounter card. Deep one assault. Disengage for each deep one at the location. Each deep one at the location. Each gets some location engages you. If no engage for this effect, search the encounter deck and scout path of D1 enemy, spawn engage with you and shuffle the encounter deck. So basically we're going to search for a deep one enemy. That's going to be fun. Here we go, first one I found, lurking deep one. Let's look at these, so these are the annoying little fish-like enemies you see on the front cover of the box. Um, it has... Uh, it's humanoid monster deep one, it has 2, 2 and 4, prey, lowest, it's lowest uh, agility stat. After it engages you, take one damage. So this is engaged us, we take one damage. So now on to our turn. So this is engaged, so what we're gonna do is we could fight, we could evade. Hmm, it's got quite a high evade stat though, so I think fighting probably be the better idea to do. We're going to play Mind of Matter to give us to use our intellect instead of our fighting ability. So technically we have six. Um, oh, we can't. We have five. Sorry, five fights against this. So we'll fight this. So we have this symbol, which is minus two. That's more enough. That's one damage on him, and we'll just fight again. Minus two, still enough. So we killed this guy. That's how we go over because we did three things. Draw a card, gain a resource, another minor dexterity card. We'll place a. Token on there, agenda card, <laughs> another lurking deep one, after engage take one damage, that's good. Okay, so we are going to, oh, this is annoying, we're going to have to evade this guy, so we're going to play my own dexterity to evade. So we have four against his, so five against his four. Oh, other sign symbol, that's always good, what's that mean, plus two. No investigation doesn't matter, so this is evaded and he's left there. So we're going to move now to the bottom location. Reveal it over, and it is the tidal pool location. It has three, one clue. It's plus one shroud while it's partially flooded, and plus two shroud while it's fully flooded. After it revealed, randomly choose one to set aside face down keys and place on tidal pool without looking at it. So we'll put that there. We'll put um, a clue on there as well. So you see a scenario as well about being lost in the, in the underground caverns, trying to find who you are, you don't know what's going on. Creates this nice feeling of tension and you know stuck in the depths, these eerie dripping water caverns. So we've evaded, we've moved, we're gonna investigate now. So there should be more than enough to investigate this location. Minus two, that's more than enough. Gain a resource because we've got to Milan. We'll take this token. We'll also take this key, the red key, put on the yellow key, never mind. We'll spend three clues to advance the act card. So we'll get the act card and we will flip it over. What have we got here? So it reads, You find a path that leads deeper into the strange cave system. Before you can follow it to see where it leads, the sound of water sloshing up behind you sets your heart racing. When you turn to face the sound, what you see next and it causes you to faint. It is an enormous hybrid of many faces and shapes, some human, some aquatic. All of them misshapen and revolting. As the thing draws closer, you must so you meet the frozen gaze of one of the faces upon its body, and you realise that you recognise it. Spawn so set aside a Malgram enemy engage the lead investigator. The Amalgrant enemy is this big elite enemy here. Now he's not too tough, he only has 3, 3 and 2. He has Hunter. If you evade it by 2 or more, take control of one key on it. After it engages you, if you control one key, either place one of your keys on it or it attacks you. When it's defeated, place it in the depths. So, this is engaged. We'll do that in a second. So where are we? There we are. Shuffle each set aside copy of Blind Sense and from the Depths and Counter Deck on the Counter Card Scar Pile, which is the cards I put set aside early on, which are these treachery cards. So I'll put these in here. There we go. And what else have we got? 
Shuffle each set of set tile tunnel locations together to form a tile tunnel deck. Location to put the tile tunnel deck into play, below to the left to each revealed location. And then read flashback one in the campaign guide. So, what we've got to do is, we get a tile tunnel deck over here. And then we place it to the left and right and below of each revealed location. So, if you can't go there, it can't fit. So, one there, one there, one there. And one there. There we have the locations. Um, this guy should have. Uh, so this is the end of the investigative phase. So when it engages you, if you control a key, if you place some keys on it, before it attacks you. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to let it attack me. I think I'm going to fall the damage. So we're going to put that there. Six. Lost one sanity. So we're on five. five technically four because of that card. Um. So. End of the round now. Ready up. This attacks. That's still untapped. This attacks. We lost another health and sanity. But we're okay. Just got, I, don't, I can't afford to lose the keys. Um, we will read Flashback 1 the campaign guide before we continue. So, Flashback 1 reads. Apologise if I take a bit of time reading this. Oh, that's quite a lot of text. Ready for the dark voting text moment. <clears throat> You stand in a small office, examining a worn photograph in a well-polished wooden frame. In the photo, a squad of men in military uniforms pose in front of a Bristol F-2 fighter plane. Several of the men wear tan British uniforms, but one sports the olive overcoat and khakis of an American soldier. His sleeves each bear a rectangular patch stripped vertically, with captains paired silver bars. The bottom of the photograph, in black ink, Christian handwriting reads, British 4th Army outside St. Quentin, 1918. The door to the office opens suddenly, startling you. You put the photograph down and turn to address the man entering. You identify him immediately by his dark brown skin, his strong jaw, and his broad shoulders. It is Thomas Dawson, the American from the photograph. Though he has aged a bit since his war days, his heavy bags hang under his eyes. One more ends, and your one begins, he says quietly. On well, this end, amazing and hard to root out. You ask the man what a war hero is doing in an investigative business, and he chuckles softly in response. War hero? I don't know where you heard that from. I was doing my duty. You shake your head, but do not agree, argue further. You suspect that the quadrant captain, Dawson, rescued would disagree as well. In any event, I suppose you're wondering why I summoned you here to Boston, he says, gesturing for you to take a seat in front of his desk. You sit to respond to his remark, affirmation. Wondering aloud by telephone call would not have sufficed. This is a sensitive matter, he replies. A few days ago, I lost contact with one of my agents, a Miss Elena Harpin. I had her investigating several strange reports I've seen in the past few months. Focus in a town called Innsmouth. Do you know the place? It's along the coast to the north of your town of Arkham, just by Ipswich. You know the place, The most have never heard of the shadowed, decrepit seaport. Those do not hear only ill rumours. From what you understand, the town used to be a lively port before the War of 1812, but has since become dingy and run down. The only railway line that runs through Innsmouth is abandoned. There are no references to the town or any maps or any damage you've ever seen. Perhaps you've found something curious or gone into hiding. I suspect foul play. It could be mob work. But I doubt it. I'm not sending any more agents until I know for sure. However, I have some room in our budget to hire a third party, such as yourself. You assume Agent Dawson dancing around the truth, which is that you are expendable. I know there's much to go on. I need to know the status of Agent Harper. Even bad news would be better than no news at this point. You do me this favour, our agency, bring your debt. You ask which agency Dawson is referring to. A smirk tugs at his lips. When you snap back to present, you can still gaze at Dawson's face, only now his smirk is twisted in a haunting visage of agony. It is just one of the many faces that arrive and torment throughout the repulsive creature's scaly, pulsating skin. The campaign log and memories of covered record a meeting with Thomas Dawson. Okay, so that's that, that's the attack, that's done, that's done, that's done. We put Doom on there. We need to encounter card now. A car memento test. Um, full power. If you reveal that's a more generous test, you automatically fail. If you fail, take two horror. Okay, so test that. Let's see what we get. I'll sign symbol. Thank God for that. That's that done. Okay, so we've got a problem. We've got a hunter enemy down there. The amalgam's out on our tail. Easily evade the amalgam, though. That's the best thing we could do. Um, okay, so we're going to evade the amalgam. We're going to try to evade it. So what we're going to do is um, 
we're going to play elusive. Disengage with enemy engage with you. So we're going to disengage with this. And move to a relocation with no enemies. We'll move over here. We're going to move to this location, which is the idle chamber. Forced, after it's revealed, place a set aside blue key on it. There we go. It has four. It has... If there are no clues in the idle chamber and you control the purple key, the purple key opens a stone door at the front of the chamber, really a shrine of two familiar statues. One white marble, other of onyx. Bring your flashback four in the campaign guide. So we've disengaged, we're going to travel to here, and we're going to investigate. And we've got more than enough investigative power to do this. We have six. We have this symbol, which means minus two, which we didn't fail. We're going to resource Dr. Milan. We get the key. And we also get the blue key. Should have read the act three, act two card, sorry. So we are forced, application is revealed. Put location of the tile to the deck to the low left to the right. Okay, there's no actual clue threshold here, we've just got to find a way out. So we have this location. Level one there, level one there, <laughs> more and more. So we need to read the flashback four in the campaign. So what's flashback four is You stand before a terrible onyx statue with a dark, dingy basement. It smells of stale dank air and rotting fish. The statue depicts a creature that is a hybrid of both fish and human. Covered in hideous, misshapen scales. Grotesque gills and fins blend with tortured human features. Its large round eyes glare at you. In the distance, you hear the faint chanting of some kind of ceremony. Yana Athri, Yana Athri, the voices cry. Just as you begin to make out the strange syllables, a splash behind you catches your attention. You duck behind the onyx statue and wait patiently as several figures approach where you just stood moments ago. You hold your breath, the gentle sloshing of their steps as they wade through the water passes and fades into the distance. You allow a brief sigh of relief, begin to follow close behind. In your campaign log, your memories are covered, recording a counter of a secret cult. Remove one of the tokens from the case pack when the campaign. Okay, that's pretty cool. And get rid of that from the campaign for the token bag, wherever that is. It is somewhere. There it is. We'll get rid of that, put it to the side. That'll help us out a little bit. So that's the end of that phase. So enemy phase now. This has hunt it, so moves close towards us. This has prey, so we're okay. Uh, we're going to resource. We also draw a card. Think when you feet. Uh, this lets us to move away from enemy. Let's pause the location. Uh, doom on the agenda card. It's only on four, so we're okay so far. Encounter is undertow treachery. If location is unflooded, undertow gains surge. Otherwise, put undertow into play in your threat area. So again, surge, so we're okay. Uh, another lurking deep one. This is down here. This engage take one damage, so we need some more damage here. So put that in our threat area down here. Uh, our turn. Actually, we'll take that back. We'll play Think on Your Feet. So fast. Spawns our location. We're going to immediately spawn and get some location. So this spawns here. We're going to move down here. It's undergoing ready. Okay, this has two clues on it. It cannot be fully flooded. After it is revealed, increase its flood level. So it is partially flooded. Okay, we can do moving though. So our turn. So we play one card. We're going to move to the left here. Sealed exit. If an investigator still controls the green key, resign. You lock this grate and swim for the trawl to freedom. Okay, after it's sealed, it becomes fully flooded. So be careful at this location now. That's fully flooded. So we basically need to find the green key and get to there. We can escape. But our turn is over. This moves towards us. Draw a card. I should be there. Uh, gain a resource. We have Kukri, weapon. Um, that on the agenda is on five. Draw an encounter card. Another Dreams of Rylet. These are getting annoying now, so I've only got technically two sides here, which is pretty, pretty scary. Okay. So, our turn now. So, we need to find this key. So, we're going to move, move again. Okay, so this location revealed is Alter to Dagon. If I to Alter to Dagon, control the blue key or three or more other keys, they may spend two clues as a group to control the set aside green key. And we only control, we do, we control the blue key. Yep, yeah, so we can spend two clues as a group, get the green key, and head for the sealed exit. 
So we need to basically just find one more clue. That's all we need to do. So that's going to be pretty simple. So that's um, move from there to there. We're going to head to the, we're going to head to the underground river, gain a clue, um, go back to Alter Dagon, exchange the clue for a green key, use the green key to get out the sealed gate. So that's how I go over. Um, this guy has Hunter, so he moves. Um, nothing else. Gain a resource. Draw a card. Sneak attack. Uh, pretty, pretty handy. Threshold is on six. One more, and that agenda moves. Encounter card is Swarm of Rats. Classic card from the uh, Gathering set, Swarm of Rats. Engage of Us has Hunter. I'm just going to fight the rats because they're really weak. Get them off us. I'll sign again. That's lucky. Uh, two rats are gone. Okay. So we need to move. We could go there out the way of the hunter. So we could risk going to there. Let's risk that. So we've done that. One, two. This is underwater cavern. We can move to any, any flooded location in the caves. After it's revealed, it's fully flooded. Um, it's only got two for the shroud value, which can be really easy to get a clue. So that's two, three moves. That's that done. Any phase, this guy moves, getting closer and closer to us. Uh, we'll draw a card. We've got the 25 automatic. Could have done that earlier. Gain a resource. The agenda card is now completed. I'll just shove these out of the way. Flip it over. What nastiness is going to be in this? So this reads, your worst fears coming true. Pools of water that are barely reached your ankles are rising and joining one another. You're going to find higher ground, but your efforts are for naught. In a matter of minutes, the water level has risen to your knees and shows no sign of slowing. Increase the full level of each revealed location. Okay, that's pretty <laughs> that's pretty annoying. So they're all going to be partially flooded. This is fully flooded. That's already fully flooded. Oh, it's kind of fully flooded, sorry. That's there. Sorry, wrong way around. So I've got to be careful now because if I do end up in a flip of location, I might take damage. And certain encounter cards do certain effects depending on what the flood levels are of your locations you're actually in. So until the end of the game, each location is revealed, which is flood level. Keeps guys in mind next to agenda two. Agenda two has a forced um effect. It's the same thing. So if we're in a fully fluid area, we don't move to at least a partially fluid area, we take five damage, but we're okay now as we are. Now it's time for our turn. So first of all, straight away we need to gain a clue. Then we'll have two clues. Uh, investigates zero. Awesome. That's a clue we've got. We've got two clues. Now how do we get around this guy? We could have we could evade. So problem is it's gonna if we move, evade, and end our two that's gonna be three goes, gonna end our turn there, he's gonna attack us. So we've got to be really careful now what we do. So we could um yeah well well, no, we should be okay. We're going to move here. Well, last turn, we're going to evade. Should be okay. We've got four stats on the evade. And we have revealed a minus one. That's more than enough. So this guy is exhausted and is evaded. Yep, that's there. Our turn's over. Nothing else of Hunter. Draw a card. Think on your feet. That's always handy. Gain a resource. Put a token on the agenda deck. Draw a card from the counter deck from the depths as well as set aside treacheries. So, this has if Malgrim is in the depths, points for the gauge of you, otherwise, if Malgrim is from the depths and from the depths gain surge. So, this guy goes away. I could have done that earlier before I did my evade action. So, he goes away. Blind sense, test agility three. If you fail and the Malgrim is in play, yeah, so we're going to test three just in case I'm going to commit two cards to this. I think that's all I'm going to need. So, we've got six. Of the evade skill against three should be more than enough. Zero, that's plenty. Didn't fail, so we're okay. Our go, so we've got two clues. We're gonna head to the altar of to Dagon. Spend two clues and take control of the set aside green key. We've got a key, we can make our way out of this hell hole. So we've moved, investigated. Oh, we need one more rumble round. No. <laughs> so, moved, investigated, and performed that action there. Okay, so end of our go. Up with Hunter, draw a card. So, we have her signature card here in the shadows. Player's two turn begins. It's engaged with each enemy engage with you until the end of the round. Enemies cannot engage you and cannot deal damage to enemies. It's a really good card, that is. 
if we are packed of enemies we can't get out. So that's two on there. Encounter card. Sword of Rats. Okay. Play for 10 begins. We're going to play in the shadows. Disengage for each enemy. Until the end of the round, enemies cannot engage you. We can do damage to enemies. So we are sort of immune. So we should have that green key there. We're going to move. So one, two. Oh no, we can't. It's an action. Done one. Yeah, so one more turn and we're okay. This guy ready's up. Hunter, he moves. We'll draw a card. Fosty and Bar. Bargain. Can't say that. That's on there. Another Doom on the agenda. Draw a card. Young Deep One. This is a has three stats overall. Prey, lowest strength. Hunter, after it engages you, take one horror. This is engaged, take one horror. So our horror is really low. So we're just going to resign. I think we can do that. Yep. So we've got the green key. You want the great to serve for the tour to freedom. Return all of your clue tokens to the token pool and place all of your keys on this location when you resign. Okay, so we've escaped. We'll just read the revelation at the end, just so you get a bit of a closure to the story. So resolution one, we escape from the uh, tunnels now. In the distance, the sky is a dark crimson, and the full moon hangs below the blackened sun. You're about to close your eyes and surrender to the consciousness, when a stranger's voice startles you back to your feet. Oh, you're alive? Even through her strained voice, you can hear a rhythmic Indian accent and the wavering confidence of a trained professional. Standing in front of you is a woman with long, raven black hair. Her tattered trench coat has seen better days, the bruises splash across her dirt covered skin. You seem confused. Why are you looking at me like that? The stranger asks. So, we're in experience. We can't spend it yet. Proceed to interlude one. Puzzle pieces. Okay, there's a lot of stuff here. So, so we can get more of the story. You have no idea who this woman is, how she knows you. Yet she seems uncomfortable or familiar with you. You strain your memory trying to think of how you might have met, but it's no use. You're certain she is a complete stranger. I've woken up in a cold wet prison, no memories. You aren't feeling very sociable. Your fear and distrust must show because the woman whip backs off and narrows her eyes. What is it? What's wrong? You respond by asking the woman if you know her. You truly don't remember? Well, it's a compliment, tell Kate things. What do you recall? Do you remember anything? You like this woman flashes of revelation that you experienced earlier. So this is where you tell this lady that uh, the memories that you've recovered. So we only had one memory, which was the memory of Thomas Dawson. You put two, two together and ask the woman, is Miss Harper? You put two, two together and ask if the woman is Miss Harper. Ah, so do you remember me? She asked with a playful smirk. But you shake your head in response and explain that you remember me being hired by a man named Thomas Dawson to find her. But that was... Oh, you have forgotten a lot, haven't you? Speaking of Dawson, where is he? Did you see him down there? Your first turn to a twisty, mangled face had triggered your flashback. Agent Harper's expression turns sour as she watches your eyes. I see. I wish she hadn't come to this forsaken town. Those brutes are going to pay for this. You ask if she thinks she's responsible for Dawson's death. She raises her eyebrows in response. Right. I don't remember. As far as I know, last time anybody saw either of you was just before you entered the historic order of Dagon. Draw your own conclusions. You see the actual experience. Um, and then we have the last bit here which reads You point to the strange crimson horizon behind Agent Harper and note aloud the alignment of the sun and moon. That began just after you and Agent Dawson entered the Order's headquarters, she explains. That was almost three days ago. I have no idea what this means, but I can't imagine it's anything good. All the intel has been locked tight lately. Not a soul in sight. You're lucky I figured out where to look for you. Your mind reels. The last thing you remember before waking up in that dank pit was enjoying a pleasant late summer's eve in Arkham. Now you're in another tower together. Memory is filled with gaping holes. You wonder aloud what the date is. Agent Harper replies. It's 24th of September. I don't know when exactly you arrived in itself, how much your memory is missing. Isn't there anything you remember? Anything at all? The water splashes against your feet as you struggle to remember. In minutes, the tide has risen several inches. There's no sign of it slowing down. You fix your gaze on the woman who stands before you. Her weary eyes, her disheveled clothes, red marks on her wrists. That's what triggers your recollection. Wake up. We're almost there. Memory lurks at the precipice of your consciousness, threatening to draw you into darkness. Hey, wake up, I said. You touch your forehead, a searing pain bounces throughout your skull. Wake up, damn it. Darkness pulls to the edge of your vision. More memories come flooding back. And that is the end of the first scenario, the Pit of Despair. I hope you enjoyed this playthrough. And this deck has been really fun to play with Trish. It has some great cards. I love playing rogue cards. Seeker's always fun. 
because I get, I, you know, fast enemies is always fun, but to avoid them and evade them, evade them is a lot, you know, more um, constructive. Just to leave them alone. Especially if I've got hunter. If I've got hunter, evading enemies is one of the best things you can do. We did quite well here. Um, I didn't get many flashbacks. I mean, if you wanted to, I mean, a fair play I've got luck is two more locations I didn't receive here. One, there's two more uncovered. They probably had flashbacks in them too to get more memories. Uh, and we got a few experience from the campaign. I uh, hope you enjoyed this play for this uh, campaign and enjoyed the minor rating a lot of text. <laughs> I apologise. Um, well, that's it for this playthrough. Any questions, uh, leave in the comments. Uh, anything you want to see next, any uh, suggestions or questions about scenario, enemies, cars that you've seen, anything you want to ask about this uh, is our conspiracy box, feel free. Uh, if you can subscribe, I'd appreciate that, and thanks for watching.